the tractor is dead. I'm sorry. So a little while back, uh, I did a video on Clement um, and how I decided that it was time to call time on Clement. Um, and it was a sad video and the car's gone and has since been submerged in the River Severn. That car can't catch a break, can it? I don't think that puts its uh, plans for the summer uh, on a different trajectory. Uh, I imagine it shouldn't do, but hopefully, um, well, we'll find out. Um, now, this one's about the Tractiva. So a few people have been asking me about this car, which sort of came onto the scene during the first uh, live stream um, video I did, the, the Sophie's Legacy one, um, not last year, the year before. And I basically uh, announced it, talked about the plans, this car, what it is, and what I was going to do with it. So in this video, I'm going to very quickly recap what this car is and what the plans were and what I was going to do with them, and then tell you why I'm not doing that anymore. So this car is a Citroen Xantia Activa. In the UK, uh, it's a UK car, they were, there was only one model, the Citroen Xantia Activa Turbo. So it's a two litre turbo, a two litre petrol turbo. It's an eight valve engine, they're not particularly fast. It's not a, it's not a speed merchant, um, that's not what it's about. It's a, a two litre, eight valve engine, 150 horsepower, but it, it's kind of like the way it delivers torque is more, it's very linear, um, you know, it's, it's good for, whooshing around the countryside as opposed to charging around the countryside um so yeah the, the the trick with these cars i know it looks well this one looks a bit rough i know it looks like a citroen xantia which was just a car from the 90s wasn't it, it was a sort of is it d segment mondeo vectra honda accord sized car um replaced the bx uh, it does look like that but the activa denoted by this badge and the fact they have slightly wider front wings, slightly different wheels, a slightly d deeper front bumper and a spoiler. And that's it. There's nothing else really that makes it stand out. The Activa had a secret party trick because normal Citroen Xantias have hydropneumatic suspension. You'll have to watch some of the other videos I've done for that um, to explain kind of what that is. Then there were cars that had Hydractive, which was a computerized version of that. And then there were these, and these have, they don't have active suspension, this is a myth, it's not active suspension. These cars have active anti-roll bars. So basically, in, with the anti, you've got your anti-roll bar going from left to right across the car, and instead of having a drop link at either end, or a, a, a stabiliser link that connects the anti-roll bar to the suspension, on one side, on an Activa, you've got a hydraulic strut, and then you've got one on the back as well, on the rear anti-roll bar, only on the opposing corner. And when the car goes around a corner, if it detects lean, that strut compresses or extends, thereby positioning the anti-roll bar and changing the length, effectively, of the stabiliser link, which makes the car stay flat around corners. And of course, because it's working on the anti-roll bar, it doesn't affect the ride. I mean, there is a little bit of ride effect going into it, but yeah, for looking at it from the basic point of view, that's how it works. Um, and it, it works really well. It's brilliant. So my plan was with this car, I got this car back in 2020, I think it was, and it was quite a tidy road car. It's, it's not mint. It's got, there's lack of problems on the roof. There's a few niggles and things. But the main thing with this car was that it had been written off. It's been smashed at the front, which is why it has no front end here. The wing has been removed. It's bent, it's bent here. It's kinked here. So this crumple zone, that it's all... So that is slightly pushed in. Now, for my plans, that wasn't going to be a massive problem because ge geometrically... Was that a word? That is a word. Well, I don't know if it's the word for this. Uh, but from a geo point of view, the car is largely okay. Uh, it's more the bodywork fittings and everything like that. So my plan with this, bearing in mind that I bought it like that, originally it was going to be a donor car and be matched with a V6 Citroen Xantia to, com com or to create a V6 Activa, which is a car that we didn't get in the UK, but they did get abroad. Then the plan changed because I thought that's too much work and I have to scale back what I'm doing. The plan changed to make this into a track car. And that's something that excited me because I did a track day in uh, my Hillman Imp, Hilda. Um, well, when was that? God knows, a couple of years ago? And I broke it. The only track day I've ever done, and I broke it. Um, but I loved it. The five laps I had around Goodwood, I loved. And Goodwood is like, I don't know if it's sacrilegious to say, it's not a very exciting track. It's a loop. It's not like a Brands Hatch or a Knock Hill or 
an open park or something like that it's just a loop so i got the bug i, I got the itch i wanted to go and uh, do more track work but not in that car because the imp broke its gearbox doing that and i figured that it would probably do that again so i came up with the idea of turning this into a track car which i was really up for because i thought it's smashed up it's a cat c right off so or whatever a cat it is um so you know it's never going to be like worth anything it was a shame because originally it was a low mileage i think it's only down a hundred and oh it's moldy a hundred and nine thousand so it's not many for one of these but yeah because of its um condition it was never going to be um you know a particularly great example and so i thought let's 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 get some enjoyment out of it in other ways uh, rather than just seeing it go to the scrapyard so the plan was to make it into a track car um so the reason originally that excited me because i thought it's a cue car you know it's a sleeper on a country lane these things can really annoy people because it just looks like an old antia but they go around corners much faster than you'd expect so i thought that, that could be really good i could capitalize on this i could make it even faster around corners and really annoy people on tracks that would be good wouldn't it well the more i've thought about it over time the more I've changed my mind, because I'll explain why. Well, first off, uh, I'm going to cover the track car bit of it. I do still want to do a track car, but I've decided that this is not going to be it, even though it has a really cool name, which was Tractiva, track car and Activa, track Activa, Tractiva. I thought that worked really well. I do still want to do a track car, uh, and I do still want to do a track car uh, with my kids. They're massively into motorsport, and I think it'd be a really good experience to sort of have growing up to go visit some of the circuits around the country that they watch the touring cars go around and, and just kind of enjoy it, you know. Um, I think it create good memories, and I think it's something they would enjoy. But the fact that this was a Citroen Zanzi Activa, to them, was completely irrelevant. It was just a car and they enjoyed making a track car or starting to make a track car and working on it and everything that involved. A bit of father-son bonding time. I say they, they're, they're twins, the two that were helping me. But the fact that there was a Citroen Xantia Activa to them, if, if anything, that was a downside because that's not a cool car to a 14, 15 year old. I don't even know how old they are. How bad? No, 14. It's not a cool car, right? So, but that didn't matter because it was just like, well, it's gonna, whatever car you're going around the track in, it's fun. So I am still gonna do a track car with them, but it will be much more simple, much more streamlined, a lot easier to do, a lot quicker to create, a lot less complicated, um, and something that hopefully can be done this year. Uh, and something they like, it'll probably be a mini. Although I did see a Saxo the other day, I was, I was like, ooh, there's a Saxo, a bid on it. I should have bid higher, to be honest. I should have bid higher. I only bid to 550 quid. I should have gone higher because it had a cage in it and everything. Anyway, that'll come another time. So it'll probably be a Mini. One of them R50... No, I don't know what shape they call them. No, mini Cooper. Mini 1, that sort of thing. It's more than likely going to be one of them. So, yeah, they're not fussed. They just want, they want a track car. They're not bothered too much which one it is. If it's something they like, like a Mini, they probably think they're quite cool. They like the Saxo, even better. Um, but basically, something that's already been round a track as a motorsport series. Um, I think that would probably have a bit of kudos. So, yeah, put that to one side. I stopped and thought about this quite a few times recently and thought, is this the right thing to do? And I have to be honest... No, it's not. It's a silly idea to make a track car out of a Xantia Activa. And I'll explain why. Well, there are two reasons, two main reasons. Uh, well, actually three main reasons. The first one is it will take me a long time because you have to make everything. You'll have to make, get a roll cage custom made. You'll have to do all the custom stuff you were going to do. It turns it into a massive project. I don't have time for another massive, pro massive project. I have an SM. That's the massive project. This is not supposed to be a massive project. It was another distraction like Clement. So that's one of the reasons it would have taken a very long time to do. But the two bigger reasons I'll go into quickly. So the first one is that part of the appeal of a Xantia Activa is what it's able to do on the road. Okay. As a road car, they are amazing cars. They're very, very, very clever. They're very comfortable. The ride is very good. Um, 
you know it's it's still hydro citron smooth it's not perhaps quite as smooth as some of the others but you know with all the extra gear on it but it's it's still pretty good in fact these do actually have a party trick where if you hit a bump like that if you're going straight down the road you've got no steering lock on one wheel hits a bump and the other one doesn't it just does this instead of the anti-roll bar shocking between the two because it says well you've got no steering lock on so the, the hydraulic ram doesn't need to be taut it can be soft so you don't get that rock roll like this which is really good um kind of uncanny actually the way it does it but so on the road these cars are they're quite something they can ride really really well you can get to a corner you can go around the corner with almost no body roll and if you hit a bump halfway around that corner it will go over it pretty much like it would have done in a straight line it defies physics well it doesn't i suppose it doesn't defy physics because it's working with physics but it defies what you perceive to be able to, to happen because if you get to a corner and it goes around it like this flat you assume it's going to be rock hard and it's not it's still soft it's really really clever uh, the car carries a weight penalty for this it has a lot of it has 10 spheres in it it's got rams all over the place wiring electrics everything it weighs we've well, seen the video we don't know if you've seen the video but the first video we did on this car uh, I weighed it and it was like 1,420 or something like that. It's a heavy, heavy car. Ten suspension spheres fitted to this car. So you carry this penalty. You've got this ability on the road, but you do carry a penalty for it. It's a big weight penalty. On the road, that is useful. But on the road, you could be kept up with, uh, as I did. A friend of mine had one of these. In fact, he owned this car once. He's a knobhead, but he owned this car once. Um, and I was in the Saxo that's in the other Saxo video from the other day and I pushed him around a corner in the Saxo because at the time the Saxo was slammed and solid and jonned up so although it rode terribly and drove terribly generally it could go around corners very fast if they were smooth like they are on a track so basically I'd be carrying around a huge weight penalty to make the car good at something that it isn't being required to do it wouldn't, think about it Think about it, is that going to be any faster around a corner on a track as a road car than a lowered Mini? No. If anything, it'll be slower. It's heavier. It's not made for that. It's made to be able to go around corners very, very flat and safe and, and technically amazingly and be comfortable on the road. It doesn't need to be comfortable on a track. The car's carrying a huge weight penalty and I'm not getting any advantage out of it. So it's really not, a, it's a silly thing to do. So yeah, it makes no sense. The second reason is that this car, because it has all this tech, there's almost an element of the car where you don't feel what the car's doing. And it's not just anti it's it, a lot of hydro citrons are like this. You don't feel what the car is doing. You just kind of, you trust the car. You know, uh, Citroen brakes, for example, are amazingly powerful, but there's no feel in them. You're just basically opening a valve with your foot. Car can stop on a sixpence, but you can't feel it. If you were starting to get brake fade, and I know people go, oh, they're fade free brakes. I've had brake fade on these before, so they're not fade free. If you get them hot enough, you can get problems, but you can't feel any difference. You can't, you know, the steering is all connected to this, the hydraulics, the brakes and the suspension. And if that fluid gets hot, and you think, oh, I'm gonna have to put a fluid cooler in it and everything, and you just think, there's a reason why the BX4TC didn't do very well in Group B, isn't there? The other main reason is, I mean, I watch a lot of uh, Danny DC2, who actually subscribed to this channel recently. I had a little weird kind of fanboy moment about another man who makes videos. But he's living the dream, and he subscribed to the channel, and, he, and I watch a lot of his videos. He does... Um, UK Hot Hatch Championship, he's also raced the MR2 Championship, he does a lot of motorsport, he's living my dream. Um, I can't afford to do that, but he does that. And he, the guy can pedal, way better than I could. And one of the things he says when he's driving it, and he, before he does the races, he's, he's driving them around and he's like making little tweaks and changes and things like that. And a lot of these tweaks and changes are to do with the setup of the car. He's like, oh, I can feel it, it's a bit you know, the, the tire pressures are off here, or I think I need to increase the dampers on the front or whatever. It's all about feedback. And the harder you push, it's all about the car communicating with you, right? So what if your car is a mute? 
it's not made for it, is it? It's just not made for it. I'm, you know, a car that doesn't give you any feedback, you're just supposed to put your trust in it. Which on the road is fine because you're not going at 10 tenths. On a racetrack, it's a different kettle of fish, you know? Race cars are different to road cars. And yes, you probably could make a cool race car out of a Xantia, I'm sure you could do it. But it would almost make more sense to start with the most basic Xantia you could find. So you only had like five spheres, accumulator, one on each wheel, more like a BX underneath. Bare minimum everything, absolutely bare minimum everything. Maybe even put conventional brakes in it. Then you might come up with something, but much as it pains me, uh, yeah, I don't think this is, th I don't think this is the right idea and I don't have the time. So I'm very sorry. I'm sorry that the Tractiva has come to this, but if you kept watching the video, if you didn't get to the beginning and go, mm, and turn it off, dislike, I actually have some good news as well. I bought another Activa. Uh, it's completely true. I have got myself another Activa. Um, yeah, I know I was supposed to be cutting back on the projects. Well, this one's not so much of a project, so I'll explain the deal. Uh, basically, this car has, you might have seen this car in the background in various videos. Basically, the car came here um, as a customer's car. He'd seen the work I'd been doing on, well, work, hadn't done much. He'd seen the work I'd been doing on the Tractiva and thought, oh, do you want to work on my Activa? I've just bought one. Um, I said, yes, I got it here. I went through it and said, yeah, there's quite a lot wrong with that. Um, and uh, he said, right, yeah, no problem. He was really good. Yeah, fine. As and when. And in the meantime, I guess because he was getting itchy, uh, he bought another Activa. Another not quite, look quite a nice looking one, actually. Um, and this was going to get done as and when. And then when this was ready, the grey one would be sold that he bought. And this one would go back to him. Only he's kind of <laughs> sensibly the other day reached the realisation and said, hang on, should I just sell this? Because I've got a grey one and the grey one works fine. So, when he said he was going to sell it, I thought, hmm, yes, yes, yes. Now, I know I've done that thing where I said, oh, I've got too many projects, and then taken on another one, but I haven't taken on another one. We're getting rid of the Tractiva. That's going, and this is nothing like on the scale of that. It is basically, I mean, it, went, it got here, it drove here itself. It's an, it was an MOT'd car, it has since expired. It does need some work, but nothing major. And this is all stuff I can do and, uh, and have the car as a road car, which is what the Activa, that's what it should be for. That's, that, that's, what, it's, that's what it excels at, not this one admittedly it needs a bit of work it needs a bit of love but it, it's worth it now this particular car appeals to me quite a lot because well the main reason the color dante red this is the axe of a color this is the color for an axe this is the color that the second concept car was made in the axe of a two and it, it's like all the and all the press stuff and everything it was all dante red this car i've always wanted one in dante red this is i've had i've had two silver ones um yeah this was this was kind of it the other thing i really like is that if you're not in the uk this doesn't mean a huge amount if you are in the uk i'm going to get proper font don't worry I'm, those are one of the first things that's going to go but if you're not in the uk this here that's important the reason that's important is because it signifies the car was registered between august 1995 and july 1996 and with this car it was built November 1995, it's a 95 Activa, this is a really early one. Which for most people would be worse, because it doesn't have air conditioning. But for me, I prefer it, I like it. I love the early ones, the ones where they've, they've just come out and they're, like, they're in their pure form, they haven't been improved. Yeah, no, I, th I think it's really good. Um, there are some issues, like someone has painted this white, which, which took me a while to notice actually. Um, yeah, I guess it's because the silver stuff underneath is all perished like they do. But yeah, someone has painted them all. And it's not just the front. It's all the way around the car. There are a few niggles. There are a few knocks. Uh, there's a bit of osmosis. It has, I think it's had paint in various places. It's not the best, but it's good enough for me. It's a very, I think it's a very pretty car. I think these look great. And it's good enough for the, for the for what I do. I mean, there's a bit of a, a bit of paint flake in here. These sorting out. Might have to visit old, uh, 
old Whitelands, the old rivals, but yeah, it's um, the wheels are really good. I think they've been refurbished. It's got some what look like Zara Picasso soldier Peters on it. That won't do, that will have to go. I wonder where I'm going to get some proper side repeaters from. Ah! Exactly that. I've got a spares car, haven't I? The Tractiva can become a spares car for this one. There are a number of things that the Tractiva can give. I think the Tractiva has lots of good spheres on it. The spheres on this are not good. In fact, they're not even the right spec. So this thing does not ride properly. It doesn't lift properly on this wheel. It sits a bit low here. Uh, it does have a leaky rear uh, active ram, the ram on the anti-roll bar. It does, an act it does a shuffle when the pressure regulator cuts in and out. It does a little shuffle. By the time you see this video, I will have hopefully contacted the guru, the man I consider to be gurus on Activas, Jim, um, and I'm going to speak to him about things I can do with this car. But basically, everything this car needs, or most of what this car needs, I can take from the other one. And then if I don't need a specific part at the time, I've got a spare source. I've got rams, I've got roll bars, I've got struts, I've got everything. Um, so what does this car need now, you might be wondering. Well, let's have a little a little look-see. Right, so bodywork I'm not fussed by. A couple of chips here and there, I'll deal with it. I'm not really that worried. Uh, under the bonnet, things I need to do. Clean it. Spheres are wrong. These are dated 2011 and the part number on these is an old GSF part number for non-hydractive Xantias, so they're completely different. It doesn't ride properly and it doesn't lift fully, so it does crash over bumps a little bit. I'm hoping that might just be a case of adjusting the height correctors. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm, I think it will hopefully be an easier fix. Um, one of the jobs I am going to have to do is I'm, I don't trust these top mounts. You've seen videos before. I did some videos on the BX ones a while back and then actually removed the video because I wasn't happy with it. But Xantias and XM suffer terribly with these top mounts here because this lump that the sphere is bolted to is all part of the top mount for the strut and they break and they pierce through the bonnet and the car drops, which isn't good, especially when you haven't got much suspension travel, which is one of the reasons why it's not driving at the moment. It's off the road um, just because I don't want it to spear itself. So those struts can be taken off and they can be sent away and be refurbished. Activa struts, I think, are specific to Activas. Um, V6 struts are specific to V6s. I have a V6, which is boardline spares car. It's a bit of a project. Anyone want a project, aren't you, a V6? Um, I have that and I have the Tractiva. I may take all the top mounts off and send them all off and get them all refurbished. I don't know. Um, but definitely these ones need doing at the very minimum. Um, the other thing it needs, the exhaust. Sounds a bit, well. The exhaust is a bit, um, yeah. Yeah. Basically the exhaust is leaking down here because someone at some point, uh, instead of buying a standard Xantia downpipe for it, has cut the old one up and bodged in a Vauxhall silencer and the whole thing is sat at an angle and it's stressed out the joint on the turbo and now it's all leaking. So I'm hoping it's just the downpipe gasket. It might not be, it might be the manifold's got to come off. These are the risks you take. Um, that shouldn't be too bad. And again, I could just take the exhaust off the Tractiva rather than trying to source a new one. I'll have to look and see what that one's like. But the biggest problem it has and it's not going to seem like the biggest problem, but it is. Down there. Now that blue thing, I'm not even sure that blue thing is um, is original. I don't think it is, but behind that are the heater connections. And it is pissing out coolant from there, which is suboptimal. Uh, I think it might be suboptimal because I think it might mean I've got to take the heat matrix out, which I really don't want to do because that means taking out the dashboard. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, you can't get a lot of access to it. The car doesn't have aircon, as I say, so it's a little easier. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure what um, what is causing that exactly. But I'm going to guess it's some old brittle plastic.
inside it's well it's standard Zantia Axiva basically. We've got a gear knob from something Japanese, I would guess. It has the velour and I'm gonna keep the velour. I do have a leather interior. I'm probably just gonna sell it. It's a full electric leather interior, but I I prefer the velour now. I've gone off leather. These are big, soft, squishy seats, although they are a little bit faded. But then I do have two other velour Zantia Activa interiors. This interior was only used on the Activa. They are specific to the Activa, so I kind of I like to keep it, um, but it's a comfy car. Oh, we're in. There's the C6 look. But yeah, on the whole, I'm I'm really excited by this. Um, this is such an early car; it has a black headlining. The uh, later cars have a well, like a creamy white, not white, light colour, beigey sort of headlining. No aircon, as I say. Um, no fake wood because it's that early. Yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm really happy with this. I'm actually very excited with it. Um, it's nice to have something to be excited about now that Clements departed us. And, you know, I gave up with that one, but I can save this one. This won't take too much. And the beauty of this is I can use it. I could use this every day. It's that comfy and modern enough. Uh, the C6 is going to be going out of service in September, I'm afraid. Um, probably for about a year. So that's getting laid up so I will need a daily and this won't be a daily for the whole time because it is amazingly rust free underneath and I want to keep it that way but um, yeah if I use it over the winter it won't stay rust free but for a little bit it can replace the C6 the Tractiva is dead long live the Activa well that'll probably do it for this one new car so yes the Tractiva is dead I'm apologizing for that now I know people were excited to see that uh, as a as a project i would have been in in a way if i had unlimited time and resources but i don't i have an sm i need to prioritize that i need to be sensible that's more sensible because it's a working car i just need to repair some of it and maintain it and that's it much less uh effort needed for that one much less time but i still get to have an activa i never really you know the tractor only got sort of four episodes in and i didn't really get any work done on it other than starting to strip it down and, and fixings, uh, it didn't run, did it? Fixed it. Um, you know, got it started. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to do some more Activa stuff, but it'll be road-based with this, which I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that. So, yes, uh, you'll see that one out and about. Hopefully get this to a show um, in the year. I don't know which one, but there'll be hopefully one show that this goes to. And um, I do, yeah, I do understand if you're, a little upset at not seeing the tracks of a project through, but come on.